Welcome to the operating room. There are several things that you need to know about in order to um, function in the operating room. The first of which is what to wear. It's very important that you wear the proper attire, and that means that you will wear a scrub suit, meaning pants and shirt, uh, as well as shoe covers, if you wish, and a cap, which is required. You also, once you walk into the operating room where there is a sterile field open, you need to put on a mask and have that on when you walk into the room. This means also that you need to have something uh, to protect your eyes. And I, even though I wear eyeglasses, I need to have a face shield across them in case there is any splashing at the field that protects my face as well as my eyeglasses. <clears throat> in order to put on a mask properly, whether it's one with a face shield or if you're going to wear goggles over your eyes in place of the face shield, the mask must be open in such a way that it will cover your nose. So you position the nose piece first. You bring the strings up to the point of your head, the apex of your head, and you tie the strings in a bow. The strings around the neck if you have long hair like I do, you need to tie them around your neck and not over your cap. And again, you tie them so they're in a bow. <clears throat> and when you're done, you should have a very nice seal on the side. Your chin is covered. Your nose is properly covered. If it isn't, and you need to give the mask a little pinch, please do so. And you can see that my eyes are well covered with a face shield. Again, if you wish to wear goggles in place of the mask with the face shield, please do so. But you must have eye protection when you're here. It's very important that before you scrub for any case, that you collect a gown and two pair of gloves from the inner core of the operating room. If you don't know where that is, there are always plenty of people around to assist you and tell you where to get your gown and your gloves. When you come into the room, ask where you might open these. When you, you will notice on the package that the packaging says the size, that it's latex free, and that this is a sterile item. Because it's a sterile item, you need to open it in a particular way. First, you take it out of the plastic wrap, and you'll notice that the packaging is is in such a fashion that there's a little tab. And this tab is like a little arrow. If you make the arrow point towards you like this, then you'll be able to open this properly. This packaging, this paper has memory. And what that means is that it remembers the position it was originally processed in, so it will want to bounce back when you open it. So when you open it, you give it a little tug, so it will stay in place. The second arrow, if you will, points in the direction it needs to go. Again, a little tug when I open that. Third arrow goes this way. And finally, this portion points towards me, and I will pull it toward me. Notice that I'm not leaning over this sterile field. I don't want to do that, because if I do, I'll contaminate things. Notice also that I didn't reach over the field with my hands. I went around the edges to make sure everything is where it needs to be. Next, you take your gloves and you stand away from the field, because this is your sterile field now, and you open up your glove packaging. Take your time. Notice that I haven't touched the inside of this packaging and that the gloves are sitting right in the middle and my hands are on the edges. I give a little pop, and there's my gloves on my sterile field. Sterile to sterile. My second pair of gloves, the same way. You open, take your time. Again, I haven't touched anything but the edges of the packaging, and I give a little pop. And if it falls, that's okay. You don't want to try to retrieve it. What you do is you open another package. You open another package and try again. 
the surgical hand scrub is very important prior to going to the operating room and putting your gown and gloves on. Obviously, we want to be as clean as possible so that we prevent infection both for ourselves and for our patients. There are a couple of methods which one may use. The first, of course, is the timed method, which I will not demonstrate here. The other is the anatomical count method. The reason I choose this is because when you are counting, it is actually a good way to focus on where your body parts are, where your hands are at the time you're doing this surgical hand scrub. And it gives you a chance to relax a little and just stay nice and focused. To begin the hand scrub, you need to choose whichever soap you desire. There are two choices here in this operating room. The first of which is a chlorhexidine, and the other of which is a iodine-based soap, like your betadine or a povidone iodine. Both are impregnated sponges with the soap, and both have uh, nail picks in them. For purposes of demonstration and my personal preference, I'm choosing the Betadine scrub brush. Pick your scrub brush, open up the packaging, remove the brush with the nail pick. Notice the nail pick is white. Discard the wrapping in a trash basket, not in, in the sink. The first thing you do is get your hands wet and on. Notice that I got them wet up to about two inches above the elbow. Now I'm going to lather my arms and hands. And I'm going to keep the lather on, and under running water, I will be cleaning my nails. Clean the cuticles and underneath the nails with the pick. Now I rinse. Discard the pick, and I begin my surgical scrub. First you make a claw with one hand. You take the brush end of the brush and sponge, and using circular motions, you make 30 strokes. One stroke equals one complete rotation. So I do 30 of these. When I'm done with that, I turn over to the sponge side. And each of my fingers has four planes. Here's one plane, the second, the third, the fourth. And I do five strokes for each plane. One stroke in this case is a back, complete back and forth motion. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Once you're completed with your fingers, you have three planes on the top of your hand. This is the first one, the second, and the third. And for each plane, you do ten strokes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Turn your hand over. Notice that the soap is dripping toward my elbows. Again, you have three planes. One, two, three, and ten strokes for each plane.
switch hands. Do the same thing with the, the next hand. Make a cloth. Turn the sponge over so the bristles show and use those and 30 complete circular strokes. <clears throat> sponge side, four planes each finger, five strokes per plane. the hand, three planes, ten strokes per plane. Palm side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now that you're done with your hands, you concentrate on the arms. The arms are divided into three sections. The first one goes to about here, the second to here, and the third goes to approximately two inches above the elbow. There are four planes per section, one here, one here, one here, and one here. Just like the fingers, you're going to do five strokes per plane. Repeat the same thing on the other arm. Three sections, okay, three sections, four planes each section, five strokes for each plane. Okay, you're all done with this part. Now you discard your sponge into a waste basket. You turn your water on with your knee and rinse. Notice that when I rinsed, I went very slowly underneath the water. I didn't backtrack. You want to avoid that. The whole idea is to let the water drip toward the elbow with the idea that you're going clean to dirty. When you're done, drip dry and then head for the room to gown and glove.